Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today in today's webinar. We hope you guys are all doing well. My name is Sunny Merchandani, your host, and I'll be pleased to be one of the speakers along with Mr. Umesh Salvi, who is the Managing Director of Catalyst Trusting, who will be joining us as a guest speaker and giving us insights on how important the trustee plays for all bond investors, the role that a trustee plays for all bond investors. Uh, Mr. Umesh Salvi, who is an industry veteran, uh, we would like to welcome him. He comes with over 15 years of experience in the trustee uh, business and with over almost a decade as uh, currently working with Catalyst as the managing director. Mr. Salvi has earned uh, trustee business, has actually got recognition to the trustee business at national level. He is responsible for overall working of Catalyst Trustee and instrumental making strategic decisions for the company. So let's, uh, before we go in detail and uh, Meshi explains, I'll just give you a quick uh, understanding in terms of what is a trustee. So basically, trustee is an intermediary that works on behalf of the venture holders, that is bond investors, uh, who represent us in a meeting or any interaction on behalf of the investors with the issuer. For example, the eligibility for this is they have to be a SEBI registered uh, entity. They need to have a valid registration certificate and they have to meet a capital adequacy requirement of 10 crores under SEBI regulations. So uh, an issuer or a debenture holder approaches debenture trustee for appointment of trustee uh, for proposed issuances of listed NCDs. So one thing we need to keep in mind that trustee is a compulsory uh, requirement for all listed instruments, for all listed NCDs. And that's where they play a role. They issue, they normally are mandated and they issue a consent, which forms a part also of the disclosure document and the offer document that the debenture trustee agreement forms before issuing. Uh, this is the basics of a trustee. Now I would like to hand it over to uh, Mr. Salvi. Uh, if you can walk us through through the next slides, make people understand a little bit better. Uh, I'll keep on pumping up some questions, Umeji, uh, so that to keep it interactive. So we already started receiving questions. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to put it in the uh, Q&A section. Uh, I request do not raise your hands. Rather, I would request please add your questions in the Q&A section. So whichever queries you have after the presentation, we will definitely take it up. Basically, uh, as a trustee, uh, uh, we need to manage many activities, but uh, these are the five areas where uh, trustees play a very important role. So first thing is for any secured bond issuances, we need to uh, create security. We need to, we have to ensure that security is perfected for the benefit of uh, uh, bond holders. So in case tomorrow any default happens, that uh, the security can be invoked. Uh, second area is uh, regulation compliances and periodical compliances. So, uh, as a trustee, we have to ensure, I mean, there are many regulations are there. We need to follow the DT regulation, which are issued by the uh, regulator SEB. There are uh, Companies Act is there, then uh, LODR, ILDS. So a uh, lot of regulations are there. As an investor, you will not come to know uh, what all regulations are there. But as a trustee, to protect the uh, debenture holders' interest, we need to ensure that each and every transaction is as per regulation. Uh, at the beginning of transaction, a lot of due diligence has to be carried out to ensure doc document is as per the regulations. And over uh, uh, till uh, maturity of transactions, there are uh, uh, ongoing compliances are there. So as a trustee, we need to ensure uh, the reminders are sent uh, sent to the issuer company, follow up with them, get all the compliances, verify those compliances. And uh, uh, we need to put it on our various websites so that investor can uh, see those compliances. Uh, third area is legal and documentation. So uh, any 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 uh, transaction has to be uh, legally, I mean, uh, proper standard has to be paid on documentation, proper documentation has to happen. So as a trustee, we ensure uh, that uh, requisite documents are executed uh, before any issue is open, DT has been signed, then TTD has to be uh, executed within a four days of uh, after issuances. Uh, then uh, under security creation documents like a mortgage document, hypothecation doc document. So as a trustee, uh, the separate legal team is involved. They uh, vet the legal documents. They give uh, expert comments on documents. Uh, before we execute documents, there's counsel opinion has been taken. 
and then we execute this legal documents. Uh, redemption, I mean, uh, till the redemption of transactions, we will uh, monitor everything. At the time of redemption, uh, we ensure that each and every penny is paid to the debenture holder, and then we release a charge on the created security. The fifth area, which uh, uh, hopefully we don't have to uh, uh, invoke, but if default happens, then we play a very critical role. So whenever an enforce, I mean, default happens, we have a different options for enforcement. Depending, depending on the security involved, we choose uh, which jurisdiction, which code to follow. So uh, if immovable is there, we have a DRT option. If any matter goes to IBC, we need, we need to follow that particular route. Uh, as a as a listed debenture, uh, you you can take a benefit of surface C. So if if you invest in a unlisted bond issuances, you might not get a benefit. I mean, you you will definitely not get uh, get a benefit of surface C. But if you invest in a listed debentures, we can we can get a benefit of surface. So that's why uh, most of the uh, investor we recommended to go for listed bond issuances. So if at all default happens and we have to invoke uh, security, then we can use the surface C. So basically uh, earlier. Whenever uh, for a security creation, there was a timeline of 90 days. But now with this new regulation, uh, we need to create security upfront. So without security creation, uh, bond cannot be listed. So uh, now it has to be secured. We have to give confirmation that all security is created. That confirmation goes to exchange. On that basis, only bonds are getting listed. Understood. So each and every secured bond has to be, I mean, uh, security has to be created upfront. There are, I mean, few options where uh, additional security can be created in the future, but uh, at least one X security has to be created before bond is listed. So, I mean, you can see here uh, now with this new in 2020, say regulator has actually empowered trustee companies and they have come out with the many regulations. So the one of the regulation is uh, on a third November uh, a regulator has said initially as a trustee, each and every trustee company used to rely on the valuation or uh, uh, title search report which is provided by the issuer company but since november 20 it is mandatory that trustee does their own due diligence so any any new transaction which we uh, take we have to carry out due diligence independently we engage uh, expert uh, agencies to carry out the due diligence uh, we don't rely on the issuer's report so CAs are appointed, title search uh, advocates are appointed, valuers are appointed, uh, company secretaries are appointed. We have an internal team, plus we appoint external parties to carry out due diligence. So before any transaction, the in principle approval uh, taken from a BSE, we carry out due diligence and we provide the certificate uh, to exchanges. Again, uh, or in obligation, the vetting of legal documents. So. DT and DTD, these are the two main documents. And each and every, uh, uh, specifically DTD, has to cover a lot of uh, points from a, a regulation of SH12 as well as a DT regulations. So our legal team ensures that each and every document is vetted and uh, DTD has to be executed in a two form, part A and part B. It's a standard format has been created. So as a trustee, uh, technically, none of the debenture holder execute this legal document. So they are not aware what is getting executed here so as a trustee to protect debenture holders interest a legal team vets each and every document we give confirmation and after that only this document gets executed so we play a very important role in the vetting of legal documents uh, as i mentioned earlier after due diligence we issue annexure a so the complete process of uh, any new bond issuance is we do due diligence we carry out we execute documents like DTA, then we issue an extra day. If we are satisfied, then only we issue, issue an extra day. If we find any discrepancies in a, any of the activity, we don't issue an extra day. And without an extra day, issuer cannot get in principle approval from a BSC. So the first step for a, any issuer company is to get in principle approval from exchanges. So for that, our an extra day is very, very important. So after an extra day is done, then DTD comes in which we again map all the uh, uh, SH12 and uh, Companies Act uh, provisions and we execute DTD. Uh, depending on the security, we execute other legal documents like mortgage document, hypothesis document. If mortgage is there, if it is created by an equitable mortgage, then we take a physical position of all title documents and it can be across India. 
some real estate company in a Bangalore doing a, uh, executing, uh, uh, they're coming with the bond issuances. So we have to actually physically take all title document, which can be uh, in hundreds of number. So we verify this document, we take a custody of this document and we issue custody confirmation letter to a debenture holder as well as issuer company. We give confirmation that all documents are with the trustee. So after everything is done, then uh, there are certain CP requirements as per the transaction structure. So uh, maybe annual report, uh, uh, title search report, valuation report, and there can be n number of CP uh, requisite board resolutions from a issuer company. So as a trustee, we obtain all the CPs. Once we get uh, CPs, then security is perfected. Then we move to the annexure B. Uh, Sunny, can you move to the next slide? Correct. Uh, here again, there are specific timelines are given for issuer companies for each and every step. Like after uh, money has been taken from a debenture holder, allotment has to happen in within two days. So it is our responsibility to ensure that debentures are created in a debenture holder's account within two days. And within four days, we need to uh, issue an extra B. So before issuance of an extra B, as I mentioned earlier, the security has to be perfected. We need to do uh, charge filing. We need to uh, we need to ensure that REF is created by the issuer company. Now, what is REF? So REF is recovery expense fund. So if again uh, this was introduced by regulator in 2020. So if any uh, issuer makes default and as a trustee we need to action against them, there has to be some funds available with us. So because we cannot for any public issue we cannot go to all debenture holders. Uh, uh, to take a legal action against issuer company. So uh, initially regulator has started with 25 lakhs of REF. So whenever any issuance happen, that issuer company has to create REF. So before issuing an extra B, we'll ensure that REF is created by uh, issuer company. This REF is with BAC or any exchanges. Uh, exchanges give confirmation that REF is in place. After that, we issue an extra B. Then for a perfection of perfection of security uh, there are various different uh, uh, process we need to follow first is roc filing as per companies act any secured uh, transaction it has to be charge has to be created uh, in a mca so we ensure that roc filings are done for immovable as well as uh, uh, movable securities uh, sursa filing SIRSA, roc filing happens from a both side like issuer initiate then we confirm it then a filing is done but sursa filing for taking the benefit of surface, it is mandatory to have a surface for each and every secure transactions. So our team uh, for each and every asset, we do surface filing. Uh, again, it is different for movable and immovable. For any 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 kind of security is there except uh, uh, pledge shares. Surface is mandatory, so we do that. Uh, in 2016, IBC introduced NESL filing. So if Again, NSL filing is separate reporting. Again, each and every bond uh, or any loan transaction, uh, uh, anyone borrows money, they have to report a transaction to NSL. The benefit of NSL filing is if in IBC, if tomorrow we have to go to IBC, IBC can directly take claims from NSL filing. So if I, if we have filed for an ABC issued company, that company has raised 100 crore rupees. So we create a charge of 100 crore against that issuer company in NSL filing. So tomorrow, if we go to IBC, IBC directly from that filing can uh, 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 accept a claim. We don't have to again prove a claim. So if NSL filing is done, directly claim can be accepted. So that's the benefit of NSL filing. Then the lot of ongoing requirements like quarterly, half yearly reports. So as a trustee, we send re reminders to the issuer company uh, for each and every quarter uh, uh, as well as half year. So now with the new rail regulation, the formats have been changed. Quarterly report has to be uh, uh, taken by the issuer company as well as as a uh, as a trustee. We again independently carry out asset cover uh, certic, asset cover certificate for each and every transaction. We again so engage. What kind of compliances is this, Umeshji? If you don't mind me asking, like, do they have to submit their annual report, their financials, and stuff like that, or security cover working? Yeah, so annual report is it's a it's a uh, one uh, one time activity once in a year. But quarterly and half yearly report, it is to ensure that security is there throughout the life of transaction. So if you if you uh, you know earlier regulation there was a 
quarterly report from Companies Act, but it didn't uh, include the asset cover in detail. But now regulator has come out with the format of uh, this asset cover certificate, and there are many other things included in the quarterly report. So issuer company has to provide this quarterly report, as well as trustee independently engages their firms to carry out this quarterly report. So uh, we don't rely only on the issuer's quarterly report. So trustee ensures that each and every quarter we uh, do again due diligence. We ensure that security cover uh, it is as per the as mentioned in a uh, transaction document. If 1.251x is security cover mentioned, that we have to ensure that each for each and every quarter the security cover is maintained. Again, there are specific requirement coming from half yearly uh, uh, side. So recently regulation have changed and half yearly we have to take confirmation from statutory auditor of the issuer company. So we uh, we send a reminders again and we take a confirmation from statutory auditor. Uh, a specific format is given by the regulator. So uh, whenever this report will come to us, we'll verify this report. We ensure if we find any discrepancies, then we uh, go back to the issuer or statutory auditor. Uh, we discuss with them. We ask them to revise report uh, till a satisfaction. And these half yearly reports are uh, uploaded on a website of trustee companies. So if any debenture holder want to see this half yearly report, they can go on our website. They can see each and every report. Quarterly report, we don't upload this report on a website. However, we put a status on a website whether we have received quarterly report for any specific issuer. So if you if you go on a uh, catalyst website, you can see a quarterly compliances uh, uh, section in which you can see where you have invested, whether that particular issuer has uh, is providing quarterly report on time. You can actually go and open each and every half yearly report, which has the asset cover certificate and everything. So it is, I mean, uh, as a debenture holder, you should uh, visit a uh, trustee's website. You should see how uh, how that issue is performing. So, I mean, you have a multiple platform. If, you, if you're not comfortable with that particular investment, if you see that any particular issue is not providing quarterly report, mm -hmm. you go through the half yearly report. If you find any discrepancy, you have option to sell that. I mean, you can go to the India Bond uh, platform or any other uh, platform to sell your investment. So this particular report, uh, uh, by which investor can make decision whether to continue with the investment or they can sell it in the secondary market. Go ahead. Again, uh, uh, there's a continuous monitoring of inflation principal payment. Uh, so what happens for each and every inflation principal payment on T minus seven day, uh, as a trustee, we send a reminder to the issuer company. And issuer is supposed, I mean, uh, they're expected to give confirmation on uh, payment date where the payments are made to all investors. We, uh, when when we get confirmation from an uh, issuer company, we verify, we take account statements, uh, we check exchanges, uh, if any default is uh, reported or not. And then on T plus one day, that is immediately next day of a payment, we give confirmation to rating agencies. So whether payment is done, if payment was delayed, the reason for delay- Just to ensure that the payments are happening to the investor on timely basis. Correct. And, and uh, if if there's a delay in any of the payment, rating agency can immediately take uh, rating action. So immediately right. plus one. So there's a pressure on uh, uh, issuer company as well. I mean, earlier, before these regulations were in place, uh, we have seen there was delay in a three, four days uh, uh, by issuer company because immediately that intimation was not going to rating agency. But now for each and every payment, we send an intimation to rating agency on T plus one day. And uh, on that basis, rating agency takes action. As an investor, Perfect. you can you can again go on our website. You can put an ISN or you can by company name. You can see when pay, whether payment when payment was due and whether payment is done or not. So you can visit Catalyst website. You can check each and every for each and every uh, issuer company where Catalyst is acting as a trustee. You can get that information when is the payment due and whether payment was done or not. So that is everything is available on our website. Understood. Apart from a. Uh, uh, Apart from this quarterly and half yearly, there are there can be n number of covenants in each and every transaction. So it 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 might not come from a regulation, but specific to any transaction, uh, maybe in IM or uh, a trust deed, uh, there will be covenants. Uh, so as a trustee, uh, on day one we uh, note down all these covenants, and we have a system in which we input these covenants. 
and uh, sometime in one specific issue, uh, transaction there can be 30 40 components is humanly not possible to remember this component for the issuer company as well as trustee so we have i mean uh, uh, we have a system where we input this components the remainder of these components are uh, sent to the uh, issuer company we monitor whether there is any breach of component and as per the transaction document we have to take necessary action if we find any breach in any of the components Again, okay. the next thing is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with the quarterly reports, we have to ensure that security cover is maintained throughout the life of transaction. If there's a drop in security cover, we intimate to the uh, issuer company, we put it on a website, we intimate to the, uh, the rating agency so that necessary action can be taken. These are the few disclosures which trustee does on a regular basis. So again, uh, 2020, uh, 12 November, CB again uh, came out with a new uh, uh, circular in which uh, uh, timely submission to stock exchange. So there are a number of uh, the, uh, 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 reportings are there which goes to exchanges. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, annexure, annexure B has to uh, be reported to exchanges. Then uh, this quarter, uh, ROC search, the valuation, uh, uh, quarterly half yearly report. So there has to be it's, uh, n number of things are there. I mean, uh, uh, right now I'm not uh, each and every uh, item I'm not mentioning here, but uh, there's regular reporting happening to the stock exchanges uh, with respect to the uh, security creation, utilization certificate, and many more things. So uh, as a trustee, uh, we regularly interact with the uh, stock exchange. Uh, then website disclosure, uh, definitely, I mean, any uh, rating downgrade or upgrade, we have to uh, uh, we update that information on a website. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, periodical reports at quarterly and half yearly, uh, each and every half yearly report is updated, uh, uploaded on a website. Quarterly status of quarterly report is uh, uh, uploaded on a website. Again, uh, interest principal payment is uploaded on a website. Uh, SSC disclosure, it is it is specifically applicable for a any shares which are getting pledged to us. So any 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 uh, bond issuance where as a security, any listed shares are coming to a security. And uh, if uh, the percentage of that uh, pledged share is more than 5% uh, of the uh, total shares issued by that company, uh, then we have to do this disclosure uh, to regulator uh, through exchanges. So we, we uh, write to BAC as well as NSE for initial uh, 5%, then uh, the, if it goes about 2% uh, plus or minus 2%, then again, we have to report to the exchanges on a regular basis. Uh, this RBI reporting, if any bond, uh, any NCD is less than uh, one year uh, tenure, then on a, uh, at the beginning of transaction, we have to report to the RBI. And at every quarterly, we need to provide a, uh, uh, this reporting to RBI where uh, information about payments and everything is uh, done to RBI. Uh, if, an, if, if any default happens, as, as mentioned in earlier poll, so stock exchanges, rating agency, and SEBI, uh, we need to uh, give information to uh, them immediately after default. Uh, then now uh, with the uh, regulators blessing, there are a number of uh, platforms are there. So uh, there's India, uh, India Bond Info is a different platform. So not uh, the, this platform, but uh, there's a bond info platform is created by the regulator in which for each and every ISN, uh, you can find out any information. So uh, rating agencies, depositories, trustees, everyone updates what information they have on their, this particular platform. So you can put in your ISN number, you can see whether the default has happened or not, whether the payments are done or not. So it's a, it's a regulator has created this platform. To, uh, so the investor can get all the information at any point of time. So as a trustee, we update, uh, we up, uh, whatever information we have, we upload on this uh, bond platform. In case of event of default, I mean, uh, it's, it's a very sensitive area and uh, the, uh, whatever we have, uh, we are doing, I mean, security creation, uh, uh, monitoring, uh, compliances, everything. So why we do that? So that in case of event of default, we can we can uh, enforce security, and we'll try to recover as much as possible uh, from the issuer company. So uh, 
any loan transaction, any uh, bond transaction. So, uh, I mean, if you see the market, defaults are always there. I mean, none of the investment is uh, a foolproof investment. But uh, with this help of this regulation, we have to ensure that the percentage of default is minimum. And if in case default happens, we can require maximum. Uh, that's the intention of all these regulations. And uh, uh, immediately when a default happens, so first thing is we have to intimate to the all investors the uh, occurrence of event of default. So event of default, I mean, investors will definitely come to know if they're invested in that particular issue and the default happens, definitely they'll come to know. However, there's a cross default clause mentioned in uh, uh, many documents. So even if uh, there is no uh, default in that particular uh, ISN, but if a default has happened in some other ISN, whether uh, uh, investor is there or not, so the cross default uh, event gets triggered and the intimation has to, I mean, uh, has to go to the older uh, debenture holders uh, who are invested in uh, with that issue company. So that is the immediate thing which we do. Uh, if there are consecutive two defaults in a payment, then uh, trustee has a right to appoint nominee director. So uh, when such situation occurs, we'll immediately uh, we immediately send letter to the uh, board of the uh, issuer company. We send it to the issuer company that uh, uh, to give us uh, to appoint nominee director of trustee. So that action we immediately take. Then uh, again in 2020, uh, the regulator has come out with a new circular in which uh, we immediately call for a meeting of dementia holder. In, in a privately placed debenture, there are a number of debenture holders are less. So it, it is uh, uh, immediately we call for a meeting uh, or we can take a confirmation on mails. But in, in, in case of public issue, where number of debenture holders are uh, uh, more, so definitely we have to call for a meeting. We, otherwise, we intimate them through mails or we use the e-voting platforms and uh, we ask them to vote. Uh, sometimes, it's, I mean, holders, debenture holders are across uh, India. So what we do, either we call a online meeting or we conduct e-voting uh, and we take a guidance from debenture holders ki, uh, uh, what, how to, uh, I mean, take further, what, to take further action, what steps we should uh, carry out. We give options and we uh, give chance to debenture holders to take a decision. So that we immediately do uh, enter into, into integrator agreement on the instruction of investor uh, with the other secure creditor. So typically when default happens, so that particular issue company has borrowed money uh, through banking challenge as well as through bond issuances. So what will happen if the securities and pari pasu basis, all uh, charge holders will claim a right on a particular security. So we have to engage into the other creditors. So it's 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 not key as a trustee, I can I'll directly definitely if the security is exclusive, I can go and take action, but security is in pari pasu basis, then I have to uh, 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 get instruction from other in which lenders also. So we get into the integrator agreement. Again, SEBI has come out with the uh, regulation how how as a trustee we should enter into integrated agreement, how we should take a voting uh, for this thing. So uh, that is our responsibility. We do that. Then on the instruction of majority of dementia holder, we, we decide the route, whether to go for IBC route or surface C. So again, uh, we give our opinion here, uh, what is the best route depending on the security involved. If some immovable security is there, then we can take a benefit of sur surface C. If only receivables are there, then we have to go for a other route. So uh, we engage councils, we take their opinion and whatever information we have, we give it to dementia holder and we ask them to decide. So definitely we'll give our inputs on, on the website. You can see for all uh, default where public issue is there. We uh, we have a status report in which we mention everything. Again, e-voting is taken for each and every action. So uh, dementia holder has a lot of power. They can decide the course of action. So as a trustee, we don't uh, act immediately without going to going to dementia holder. So we give opportunity to dementia holder to guide us. So at, at each and every step, we go to dementia holder. Then if, uh, as I mentioned earlier, after into ICA, so that there, there'll be a committee of creditors, uh, which will be formed and uh, the trustee participate in that uh, committee. So uh, not everyone gets access to that committee, but uh, as a representative dementia holder, we, uh, uh, we generally we are part of that committee and we represent all dementia holder in committee. If uh, whatever further action to be taken against issue company, 
uh, we get in uh, touch with the lenders, we take a decision uh, for a uh, benefit of a uh, debenture holders. Uh, the scores platform, I mean, each and every investor uh, has a right to uh, uh, mention grievances about uh, their investment. So we track uh, each and every grievances of investor on a scores platform. We try to resolve uh, immediately uh, majority of grievances which we have seen of non-payment of money. I mean, every default happens, but there also we guide them to what is the current status of the, uh, 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 what is happening, what enforcement uh, stage is there. We try to update uh, each and every investor. So uh, as a trustee, we immediately uh, reply to all and uh, all grievances of investor. Sir, what does score? Score is a platform by SEBI. Score this is a platform of SEBI. I mean, each and every SEBI intermediary has to have this platform. And any grievances against, uh, uh, maybe uh, grievances against trustee also, that will be uh, investor has a right to uh, uh, write on a scores platform. And uh, we uh, reply on the platform where regulator is monitoring that particular thing. So each and every uh, query raised on scores platform, it is marked to regulator also. So they also see what, we, what grievances investor has and what action trustee is taking. So it's it's for the protection of a debenture holder. If the exclusive security is there, and or maybe a pari pasu, we have a clear instruction from a uh, debenture holder. Uh, we go for litigation. Uh, we get a sale order for removing property, whatever. I mean, we take a possession of that uh, security uh, for that whatever legal action has to be carried out. We do that, and uh, we enforce security, and we I mean, we try to find a buyer for the security, and we try to recover the maximum money uh, possible. So uh, once once whatever money is received, then it has to be go to the all uh, all dementia holder on a pari pasu basis depending on the investment. If we if we require hundred percent, then everything will go to dementia holder. Suppose if we receive ninety percent, then in the same proportion, the money will be distributed to uh, all dementia holder. So that's the last step. So whatever recovery happens, uh, uh, then we have to distribute that money to all uh, dementia holder. So, and uh, we, we hope that uh, maximum money can be recovered here and debenture holders should get uh, each and every uh, principal as well as interest amount through this recovery. So this is, this is the process of a event of default if that happens.